since I'm about to put this together, the thing that I noticed earlier that I didn't show you is that the clear casing on the Titan direct drive has cracked. It was upsetting, but I have a replacement. So it's not, um, it's not the end of the world. And it hasn't cracked all the way through, just a little bit in one spot. I noticed that when I brought it out here, so I wonder if that happened because I was transporting it. I did have a six day print finish on it, so it may have happened during that print. And I didn't notice until now. That was the last thing I printed was a large helmet. I'm missing one more. I'm looking for it. So, um, the same place where I recommended that you get those bearings on my last video for the Titan Direct Drive is the same place I recommend going to get that replacement uh, clear plastic piece. This is the uh, non-reversed version. And once you get that replacement, you just swap it out. I mean, it's clear plastic. You can also 3D print it. It is actually a file on Thingiverse for it. And you could, it doesn't have to be clear. I guess the clearness of the direct drive is basically a showcase piece. Look how cool this is. So cool. Wow. I don't have a soundboard, so it's just, you're not going to get a pre recorded wow, the mean thing. No, you're going to get my voice. Perfect. If I were to make a recommendation for an improvement on this, it would be to use the same type of railing that's on the side here as on this. That would not add to any jerk um, errors on there because it would prevent flex. And that is a mandatory upgrade that I think that this entire thing needs and is something that I am thinking about doing. Amongst all the other things I'm thinking about doing to this machine, you notice a problem, you fix a problem, and it takes a while to get them all done. Mm. Luckily, I have a tap set so that I could drill new holes. The problem is drilling them exactly and machining them. So that is going to be a little difficult to do. So don't expect that video anytime soon. While I'm here, I'm going to check these. You know, these rollers don't move a lot. So you don't think about them too terribly much. But all right. Y axis done. X axis done. Z axis. Now? I just realized I could do that now. Look. I don't have to dismantle the whole thing. Look what I just found. Holy moly. Ugh. This is like, it's like one of those things when you're doing it on the fly and you're like, ding, oh my god. Okay. This is a little sketchy. It's holding together. All right, all right, all right. I thought I was done with gloves. You can't see this right now. But I, I this works. I think I can only do it to the outer two. I cannot do it to the inner uh, eccentric nuts. Because for some reason the eccentric nuts are on backwards. Well, maybe not backwards, but the bolt hole, the bolt hole is covered. If you have one of these, there's two black bolts that go into the gantry arm. Both of those bolts face this direction. And the 
bolt holes for the other ones face this direction, which means that the gantry covers up one of them. Okay, I think I can do this. I have an idea. It'll either work or it won't. And this might be a lot easier than I thought it would be. I was fretting this. It's not as important right now to do all three of them on each side. So this is kind of an experiment, or turning into one at least. I'm mostly satisfied with just having the outer ones done because they hold more of the resistance. And I think the inside one needs to be a little spongier. Like the uh, issue I was talking about earlier against the polycarbonate and the default rubber black wheels that come with it. The spongy quality of the default rubber black wheels may give a better opportunity because the spacing on this Z-axis support rod is a little off and it takes more force from the eccentric nut to cause proper adhesion on the outside rollers. So I think I'm gonna leave it rubber. I'm gonna leave it black. Whatever it's called. Oh no, can I do it to this one? No. No, I can't. <laughs> So here's the roller right here. Here's the bolt. It goes all the way through to the other side. Of course, it's just blocked by the wire. That's easy enough to do the under roller. Let's go up. How, how do I get that one? You wanna know how I get that one? I removed the stepper motor. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> While we're here, just to make sure everything's tight. That is the old extruder mount. And uh, the stepper motor is still there. And I printed this right here. This this extruder pulley motor or pulley wheel so that I can hand extrude so much easier. It was like one of those quality of life prints that's not necessary but just made life so much better. And since we're doing all of these improvements, this is an angle finder. It's magnetic, but this is aluminum, so it's not sticking. <laughs> However, you want to find a base to compare it to, and this is the best base. So I'm going to turn it on. Hit zero. One, 90 degrees. And I did that by lengthening this nut and then attaching it to the frame until it was 90 degrees. I just kept checking it back and forth, just like that. Both sides. Once both sides were done, I knew it was 90 degrees, so everything prints perfectly straight up and down. Um, and it's really sensitive, too. Like, 0.1 degree is not much. One tenth of one degree. I'm talking about something this tall, that's the taller it gets, the more accurate you're being because that's more distance. So one degree means more distance traveled. So yeah, so when that's when they're this exactly 90 degrees difference. We've got a perfect perpendicular bar. And, and these things are inexpensive. I I could show you how to do that, but that's it. You just take 
this bolt right here that's, that's in there, loosen a little bit. You give this head a single half turn. Do it again, single half turn again, until it either lengths it to push it this way or shortens it to pull it this way until you have 90 degrees. It's very simple to do. That's probably... I'm actually surprised no one's done a video on that, or have they? And I've never noticed because I knew how to do that myself and never looked it up. That may be the case. Oh, how'd you like my two cameras set up for once? This is the first time. I'm kind of excited to edit this and see how it turned out. Uh, okay, um, I should ask this beforehand. <laughs> it's too close. Like and subscribe me, please, and let me know that this is the reason why you want to see more videos. Um, if not, I will go back to doing more artist tips. I've had some popular artist tips that I've taken off, and um, sharing knowledge like this is what helps community grow. So, if you want to see me do something specific with this printer, okay, okay, I'll put the Hemery on eventually. If you want to see me do something specific on this printer, let me know. I'll get around to doing it. That's a joke based on my frequency of video upload. Okay, I'm done. Bye.